Welcome to formula mass and molecular mass. In this lesson, we're going to look at what the chemical formula can tell us about the mass of a molecule. While you watch this video, you should have a periodic table nearby so you can look at some of the numbers that I'm using and see where I'm getting them from. So pause the video now and get your periodic table if you don't have it nearby. Before we can talk about the mass of a molecule, we have to recognize that molecules are made of atoms. And so the mass of a molecule is pretty much going to depend on the mass of the atoms that make up that molecule. Fortunately, we can easily find the mass of any atom of any element by looking on the periodic table. And then we can just combine those masses of the atoms to get the overall mass of the molecule that they make up. Let's look at an example of this. We have carbon dioxide, CO2. One molecule of carbon dioxide is made up of atoms of carbon and atoms of oxygen. Specifically, we have one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen. I'm now going to get the value of the mass of an atom of carbon from the periodic table. And I'm going to round to the nearest tenth place when I'm doing this math. So one atom of carbon is 12.0 AMUs. Okay, I got that off the periodic table to round it to 12.0. When I look up oxygen, oxygen is going to be 15.99. So I'm going to round that to 16.0 AMUs. Now I'm going to multiply these out, and I'm going to see that the total mass of carbon in one molecule is 1 times 12, which is 12.0. And the total mass of oxygen is the two atoms of oxygen times 16.0, which is 32.0. If I add up these values, the total weight of carbon and the total weight of oxygen, I'm going to get 44.0 AMUs, which is the mass of one molecule of carbon dioxide. So we call this the molecular mass. The molecular mass of a compound is the mass of a single molecule of that compound. Well, what about substances that don't form molecules? So covalent compounds form molecules, but ionic compounds or ionic salts make up crystalline structures, a network of all the ions that are present. So they don't really form molecules. So how can we represent the mass of those compounds? Let's look at an example of an ionic compound, copper 2 sulfate. Even though copper 2 sulfate doesn't form a distinct molecule, we can still find the mass with much the same process of what we just did. So in this formula for this ionic compound, there's one copper, one sulfur, and four oxygens. So one, one, and four. The next thing I want to do is look up the masses of each of these elements on the periodic table. And copper is 63.5 AMUs, rounded to the nearest tenth. Sulfur is 32.1 AMUs. And oxygen, again, is 16.0 AMUs. Just like before, I'm going to multiply these through. 1 times 63.5 is 63.5. 1 times 32.1 is 32.1. 16 times 4 is 64.0. And then I'm going to add up these components because all these components, copper, sulfur, and oxygen, are combined to make this formula. So I'm going to combine the masses that I get as well, giving me 159.6 AMUs for the total mass of this. And now it's not a molecule, so I'm not going to call this molecular mass. Instead, for ionic compounds, we have something called formula mass, because it's the mass of the formula for the ionic compound. So this is the formula mass of this substance. So the terms formula mass and molecular mass really describe the same process. But we use formula mass for ionic compounds and we use the term molecular mass for things that form molecules. That wraps up our lesson on molecular mass and formula mass. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.